I'm sure a lot of you have caught Queen Ants this season, myself included. And in the past, I always put them in a standard test tube setup. This year is different. Instead, I'll be making natural setups for Queen Ants, how they make their founding chambers, and how I plan on using these setups for future queens. On the first night, I caught 18 Brachymermix Patagonicus queens. They're invasive to the US and are originally from South America. Before I didn't catch this many, but this summer I wanted to see just how many I can catch. After moving the ones that aren't being in the experiment, I was ready to create these setups. I'm starting off with a small container about the size of a cup. This will be for a single Brachymermix queen. I didn't want the sand to be too deep, as I hoped we would see her at the bottom. But I did give the setup a small hill, which I watered the most. But surprisingly, she didn't dig a chamber in that area. After a couple minutes, she went here, where I thought she would start digging. But it looks like that place wasn't the one. I decided to not bother her too much, and instead, work on the larger setup in the meantime. I should also mention, if you plan to use sand or substrate indoors, do it next to an open window, because there was a lot of dust when I was dumping this into the container. Like the other setup, I made this with a similar layout, with a larger hill on one side, and a more leveled area on the other. It looked pretty bland, so I placed in two rocks, not just as decoration, but also a place to nest. I made sure to water the hill the most, because I wanted the three queens to have a better chance at founding together. Now that they were all here, it was only a matter of time to see how this experiment would turn out. And this concluded day one of the natural setups. Two days later, the experiment failed. I dropped a small container about three inches from my desk, making it tip over. Luckily, the queen was unharmed, but the eggs she may have had were left in the dust. <clears throat> Sorry. Since the sand was in clumps, I made the decision to mush it back together using some toilet paper. It looked more natural this way, but it all matters if she will lay a successful colony in here. I let the queen crawl down into her changed home and hope for the best as she searched for a suitable place to dig another founding chamber. The other setup though is still fully together. I saw two piles of dirt, but not a third, so maybe that queen dug a chamber with one of the two queens or even killed. Since they don't dig very deep from my observations, I don't know for sure. Tell me your ideas in the comments and I'll reply with my thoughts. The next day was footage day. As I caught the single queen digging a chamber. Just as I mentioned before, they don't dig very deep, literally right below the surface. The little chamber she made also looks like the shape of a heart, which is pretty neat. As I was watching the chamber being made, I think I spotted an egg at the top, which was soon taken by the queen. Pretty heartwarming, if you ask me. After 5 minutes of recording, I let the queen continue doing her thing, as I put the nest away to check on the other. There's not much to say about this other than there's signs of humidity. A lot, actually. When I put my hand inside, it was a bit warmer than room temperature, so hopefully the queens are thriving in this environment. The one thing I didn't know how to combat was hydration. The water in the sand should hold moisture for a while, since when I dropped the container, the substrate still felt wet, and the humidity on the sides should be enough. When it gets dry, I'll probably put a few drops around where they were nested. I don't want to drown them or dehydrate them either, so I just hope it will spread to where they're nested, or they will dig closer to it. Only time will tell how this turns out. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I plan on making more of these setups with other species. 
some of these are Dory Remix and Fadoli, because from my experience, they don't do well in test tubes. But that changed on the 14th of June, when I created two setups for two queens. Since I used all the red sand for my Rover Ant setups, I'm going to be using this substrate, which is also sand, but finer. Even the small spider wanted to see me create these, so I quickly got to work and set up camp next to the guardian ant. I'm making the substrate a little deeper than the previous ones because I feel like the queens I'm moving in dig deep into the ground. But after looking back on this footage, I should have made it at least halfway. Once I finished, I did the same for the next. And there we go, two new homes for two new queens. I was kind of thinking of adding sticks or decorations, but decided not to as the queens will need the space to dig. After taking some quick photos for Instagram, follow me on there for behind the scenes by the way, I headed back to the ender den to move in the queens. Of course, we have to water the sand first, so that they can water their chamber. Of course, we have to water the sand first, so that they can form their chamber. Since the sand was soft, it was pretty much a requirement to do so. For the final touch, I also put some drops on the lid. Everything was looking good so far. Hopefully, this will help with humidity. Now let's actually move in the queens. The first is this Dora Mermix Bicolor Deolates, the first I've caught this summer. The ones I caught last year didn't make it, so I'm glad I found one again. They're a really active kind of ants, and it wasn't a surprise when this queen kept running around. They also clean themselves a lot, definitely the most out of all of the ants I've caught over the years. Next is what I think is a Solenopsis Molesta Queen, also known as a Thief Ant Queen. She already has a batch of eggs, and the queens I caught last year also didn't make it. In order to move the eggs, I'll be using a wet q-tip. Now, I'm not actually sure what she did with the eggs because I put them on the rock. I think she was more focused on finding a place to dig after realizing she was no longer in the test tube. I have high hopes for both of these queens because they're in a natural setup. I just hope the thief ant queen will lay eggs once again. And just like that, the Conan Queen already tunneled to the bottom. It was really cool seeing how determined she was. Already having a good pile at the other end of the container. However, I think the light started bothering her as she began to cover the tunnel up with sand. It was a very quick process, but minutes later, she started to push the sand back up, probably for more space, as she continued tunneling. If you see these small hills with dug up sand around after a rainy day, a queen ant might be in there. I unfortunately haven't seen these mounds in the wild yet. Checking on the other queen, she also has been making her chamber. But the odd thing about her is that she kept walking away from her dugout and wanders around for a while. After walking, she returns and continues. I wonder if she's just taking a break or looking for a different spot. 
Whatever is the case, I left her alone until the next day. One full day has passed since moving in these queens in these setups. And the most notable part of this day is a huge mound the Dora Myrmex queen made, which shows just how much time is being put into this. It's a good thing she made it right up against the wall so that we can see what's going on. At least, that's what I thought at the time, because later that day, she completely covered up the tunnel. And already, there are more on two sides of the container, which makes me wonder what this queen has planned. The thief ant queen also progressed a little, but isn't yet finished. It's time to put them away again, next to the other setups. Good news everyone, we have ourselves our first egg pile, or actually second set of eggs from the thief ant queen. She dug all the way to the bottom, covering up the tunnel with a small mound on top. Seeing the queen in her chamber from this view makes me think that I could have a full colony in here. I guess we'll just have to see until then. Comparing this to the conant queen though, we see a huge difference in the mound size. By this time, the queen pretty much dug all around the container. I mean, look at all these tunnels. No time was wasted, that's for sure. Remember, if you guys want to see more updates or even ask me how my colonies are doing, you can always check my Instagram. So far, all of the queens in the natural setups are doing great. The next update on these colonies will be when they have workers or when I find more queens. If you want to be notified when that happens, turn on my notifications by clicking on the bell next to my profile. Some of you guys are always early to these videos when I upload, and I thank you all greatly for that. I've also created a Patreon if you want to support me even more. If you've noticed, my upload schedule is pretty lacking, I guess you could say, and I want to change that starting the day this video is out. It does cost money every month, but I'm not making the prices too expensive since I know most of you, including myself, wouldn't pay for things that are costly. So if you want to see even more behind the scenes, access to videos earlier than everyone else, and a shout out at the end, check out my Patreon for more. I would really, really appreciate it. Bestest of luck to all of you finding Queen Ants. More videos are coming soon. My name is Ender Ants, another fellow ant YouTuber, and I'll be back before you can say ant keeping. See, I told you I'd be back.